Hi, you're on. Okay, so, I... Uh, actually, it's a record that, of my the vast <laughs> experience <laughs> since uh, Harry Truman required European countries to go into uh, a government-sponsored medical system that's proven itself over and over and over again. And uh, from my research, I understand that any politician, conservative or liberal, who went against it would be immediately out of office and the government would fall. Uh, the example, like you know, one of my sons traveled in Europe and went over a fence and cut himself and went to the doctor and sewed him up. And when my son tried to pay him, the guy looked at him like he was crazy. And then my son had emergency surgery here in the States and is paying for it years later. That's a system that doesn't work. And I have two government-sponsored medical programs. My primary, of course, is Medicare. My secondary is paid for by the taxpayers of Alaska. Hmm, so you're Alaskan? No, no, but my wife is a retired Alaska teacher. <laughs> oh, so what do you think of Sarah Palin? Uh, I think she... Uh, indicates that some of the people who were choosing candidates for the Republican Party wanted somebody who looked good, who they could <laughs> manipulate and use their neocon policies to hmm. get through. Because I think their, their narcissistic attitude would have lent itself to their, their efforts. Okay. Okay? I just figured I owe it to you to give you your side because back with our friend from Acorn. Okay. And he wants we want to talk about voter registration. Sure. The fraud that was committed was committed against Acorn, not against the United States. Not by Acorn. Not by not by Acorn. It was people that they hired as as uh, piecemeal workers. Right. Okay. Now the irony that the conservatives are so upset is the law that requiring every ballot, even one you know is false, to be turned into the voter registrar is because of a Republican operative who I believe in 2000, 2004 was caught throwing away the ballots or the registration of anybody who would register as a Democrat. Hmm. And that same individual, by the way, was arrested in California this year for uh, registering voters illegally. I sure love to Google the name. Uh, if you if you probably get into you know I if I can remember it during the campaign I, you know uh, but if you get into um, voting registration issues googling you know you gonna, uh, voter fraud that kind of thing yeah I find it. yeah he, the reason he got arrested was because only. Uh, registered voters of California and citizens of California can register people to vote in California. And he was neither a registered voter in California or uh, a resident. He was right. actually a resident of Colorado. Yeah, he just descended upon the state. You know, I've heard of that happening all the time. And of course, you know, uh, Obama is nice enough to be rehiring some of the attorneys, uh, federal attorneys who were fired because they wouldn't go after Acorn for, uh, Right. Yeah, I, I've heard about that. Well, folks, you know, want me to hold the camera on you? <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, let's all be civil here. You know, we don't need the kind of filth that's been going on uh, around the country of people fighting each other. But well, I'm all for access. Uh, I'm all for um, access. I'm all for taking away the preconditioned uh, ban that some corporations have. I'm all for litigating corporations that cheat on on drug recompensation for Medicare and Medicaid. I'm all for many of the reforms in the Obama bill, but I'm against the public option for several reasons. One, I don't trust government running any side. The National Fund Insurance Program is in debt by $20, million, $20 billion, big difference, <laughs> and there's no plan to pay it back. Our country is trillions of dollars in debt, and we don't know if we can pay that back. And without balanced budgets, we hand off we tax increases in debt, which is really a tax increase on the young, to a next generation. And I don't think that's right. But again, I'm all for reforming the private sector and holding them accountable, 
and getting re getting things done so we can have access so that everyone can have health care. I mean, maybe the best option might be some low cost options in every state where you just have like four doctor's visits and you pay like a hundred dollars and something in the monthly deductible. And you get four doctor's visits a year covered under that and some basic prescriptions. That might be one option. It sounds to me like you're on the other side of the issue at all. It sounds to me like you just have different ideas, but think access is important. I think access is important. I just don't want the government coming in and taking care of health care. That's where I disagree. But all they're doing is creating competition. They're creating a, another option you have in addition to my corporate tech or my corporate health care plan. So if that one's working out for me, or not working out for me, I've got another option to go to. Right, and that's when government comes into the picture and eventually it will crowd out the private sector. That's the whole idea of the public option is to crowd out the private sector and to bring people through market forces into a public option. Everybody from Congressman Barney Frank that's... Congressman, real quick, why is single payer off the table? Uh, apparently, because we don't have the votes. I wish it weren't. I'm all for it. I'm a big sponsor. You're, you support single payer? Oh, I've been a co sponsor of single payer for a very long time. Don't you think we should scratch everything and start anew with single payer? No. Why not? Hi, how are you? Why shouldn't we start with single payer new? Oh, well, because we don't have the votes for it. I wish we did. Uh, I think if we get a good public option, it could lead to single payer, and that's the best way to reach single payer. Saying do nothing until you get single payer is a sure way never to get it. But it's on YouTube, to Jan Sharnarowski, I, I have a speech disability, so I can't really pronounce names, uh, has said that, that they support single payer and that a public option is the best way to do it. I'm now look, I know, I know that many of you here today are single payer advocates, and so am I. And those of us who are pushing, and those of us who are pushing for a public health insurance option don't disagree with the goal. This is not a principled fight. This is a fight about strategy for getting there, and I believe we will. I'm against that. I'm all for competition. There are people in Congress have over a, over several hundred at least options to choose from. I read this morning. I, I kind of think that when Congress was asked to please join the public option if you're going to vote for it, and they said no. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. When the House Ways and Means Committee recently considered the health care overhaul proposal, I supported an amendment that said, if our constituents must join the government-run public plan, so should members of Congress. Unfortunately, the Democrats rejected this amendment. Madam Speaker, I ask today, if the government-run plan is great enough for the American people, why isn't it good enough for the members of Congress? Americans deserve the freedom to choose their health care. This plan doesn't give them that choice and will force Americans into a plan that supporters of the bill simply don't want. We need to work together to protect and strengthen the health care of every American, not take away choice and drive up costs. I urge my colleagues to reject this bill, work together, on a plan that lower costs while maintaining the freedoms of Americans to, choo to choose their health care. And that's just some straight shooting from the sheriff. That should be pretty conclusive on why we don't need government control in health care. We need to regulate the private sector and tell them, if you want to remain private, if you want a for-profit part of this, then you have to be fair to everyone. You have to give the benefits to everybody.